Thank you very much. My, my mic is on. You guys hear me okay? All right. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's lunchtime, so let's, like, you know, keep it uh, light for digestion. So, yes, I'm going to talk, the title of the talk is uh, Democratizing Motion Capture with Webcams and uh, GPUs. I'm not going to lift this monster MSI box here, but there's a 1080 in the MSI right there, trust me, or come and look at after. Uh, I really want to thank NVIDIA for the opportunity to come here. We gave this, we first presented our technology at NVIDIA GTC, and that is the insane line, that's the beginning of the insane lineup for uh, uh, Jensen's keynote, which went like two miles down. All right, so we're Wrench, we're a Montreal based uh, computer vision company, and I'm here to talk to you about human pose estimation. All right, so uh, people here are pretty familiar with motion capture. At a high level, what is motion capture? It's especially real-time motion capture, because everything should be real-time. It's 2017. Um, it's digitizing humans, right? That's how I view motion capture. It's how do we take all of you, digitize you, and bring you into the virtual world. And once you can be brought into the virtual world, you can do all kinds of fun things, right? I mean, we see lots of excellent motion capture systems here uh, where we can set up VR. I mean, there's, there's, you know, there's VR for games. There's VR for all kinds of practical applications. There's bi uh, biometric things. M effectively, motion capture is the way to digitize humans and bring them in. Now, motion capture is super effective. You see it. Uh, there's lots of things. But, um, you know, there's a few things that are a problem with it, right? I mean, look at these outfits. You know, like this, that you got to wear funny outfits, um, super expensive uh, equipment, and, and, and huge spaces. Even, even uh, Microsoft Connect, which... Uh, Great system. You know, if you ever have a... How many people had a, had a connected in their house? Nobody wanted to. I mean, it's, you know, it takes up a lot of space. You have to shut the blinds, so on and so forth. Um, so, yeah, the, these are the obvious limitations. Like I said, it solves a lot of problems, uh, but they're expensive and hard to set up. And you have funny, crazy suits, and you have to do it in the dark. So that really limits, right? The limits. What about all the places you want to do it? Like, you want to be able to... Uh, you know, watch your kid run and you want to get, you know, bio data on, on how fast and what the gait of that person is, things like that. You want to do that outside. You want to stream that up. So let's look at a different way to do this. So we had this sort of eureka moment. We were working on an augmented reality uh, system that uh, we, we never get to talk about. But we had this sort of moment in there of like, you know, Connect is, is sort of cool, but wouldn't it be great if we could just do it on the phone, if we could just do it anywhere, you know, pure software. And, and it, this is really following a trend of like software is eating everything and, and a lot of things that were specialty hardware you can do in software now. So, you know, imagine, imagine that we could do something where there were no specialty sensors. You could just use standard, you know, RGB you know, s standard webcam, standard phone, I got it over there, and just use a GPU. And um, you could use it anywhere. Really, the goal is if you can see it, the system should be see it, you know? So in the, in the lighting conditions of you, so on and so forth, wherever you can see, and there should be no setup, right? Like, there's, there's no time, especially if you want to really democratize and hit a lot of, lot of people, right? I mean, the, these, the people here are, are extremely experienced, but that's a limited audience. And, and you, want, you want a system that, you know, as the hardware gets better, your system just gets better. And uh, so let's, so the idea, we call it body slam. Sa sl this is a very bad joke, slam simultaneous localization and mapping for the computer vision people, and we're doing slam on the body. So it's, it's a horrific pun, but you'll never forget the name. Um, and so the idea is, it's in, in computer vision, it's called human pose estimation, right? So you get an image and you try to understand the skeleton of the person. So it's a really sort of conceptually easy thing, right? We've got some kind of application. Uh, you take a video in, turn the crank in the GPU, and you get all the skeletal data out. Simple as that. And um, that's what we want to talk about. So Let's, if we could, oh, all right, that's me. I'm going to switch to a live demo because it's too much talking. So let's just start the live demo. Sorry, it takes a little while for the uh, network to initialize. 
And oh, yay! All right, good, good. We're we're in business. So there you go. So <laughs> go right to the demo. So it's pretty easy to understand at this level, right? This camera. Okay, I won't give you a motion sickness. I promise. But this camera is is just a simple RGB and you know horrific lighting conditions. But uh, and we're tracking everybody. So the visualizations are the blue, right? So we're generating the blue skeleton. We're tracking 21 body parts, the eyes, the ears, the nose. We look for all the body parts, and then we glue the people together. And you may say, why are some of them gray? Some of them are gray because those people are not looking at the camera. They're not listening to this talk. They've, uh, they've, they got bored. They moved on. And that's, that's helpful for uh, robotics and things. For example, the robot in the back who's playing dominoes, uh, is using our stuff, and this is how the robot knows who to play with. Because if you're not looking at the robot, he doesn't want to play with you. So, uh, yeah, 20, uh, 24 frames a second. That's on just this box here, this little um, 1080. We are computing uh, about 41 milliseconds. Now, on, a t on you know, you take it to a, like a big boy Titan X, we're getting like over 60 frames a second of inferencing. Uh, humans detected 16, uh, that's... That's not a limit, so there really is no limit. The limit really is how much can the webcam show and, uh, you know, the size of the people. Effectively, once the people get to less than 50 pixels, for this particular configuration, we, we can't do it anymore. Uh, and we're running the frame. A fun, uh, a fun joke was that this was first really shown, like, two weeks ago at the Computer Vision Conference, CVPR, and uh, which, as, as I always say, they in Computer Vision, we talk about in the wild, right? And I'd like to call going to uh, CVPR, though, the Savage Jungle, because this was an incredible number of people, and they're all experts. And so we got a couple of people trying to break it back there, but everyone was doing yoga poses and, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, the software was crashing on the first day, and um, what I couldn't figure out what it was. So our company's 12 people, right? So the most we've ever tested on is 12 people, and it started crashing. And... Um, we it turned out that uh, one of our team members hardwired it to 16 because they said, it's actually, we I say this and it's because only a 16, but it can do more than 16. And people said, well, uh, we should only track 16 people, right? That'll never happen. We need more. But then at CVPR, we had, you know, 100 people there and it would crash. Every time it hit 17, it would throw an exception. Anyways, it doesn't crash anymore, so I'm really grateful. And what's fun for here is uh, virtual green screen. So we know where all the people are. So great, and so we find all the skeletons, but then what we can do is extrapolate out, right? We take all your skeletons, and then we move out to where your skin is, and effectively, it's a green screen. So when you think of it from a visual, uh, you know, a, a VFX perspective, we have all the ingredients, right? We have your skeletal information, and we have your, uh, we have a, we've extracted the background. We've got a green screen. So effectively, that's everything you need to do visual effects. I'm gonna, can I try to try to bring up on the phone. And we want to give you a little demo of that. All right. Okay. So there we go. All right. Uh, oh, good. Yay. Okay. Good. Okay. So we have this running here on, this, on the iPhone. This is native. Now we're only going to do one uh, frame uh, so I don't burn the GPU on this, on this device. But this is just standard camera, you know, standard iPhone camera. So let's try it. Let's take you. You sit in the front. No. All right. So this, we might not be able to, let's see, did we? Oh, no. Okay. So let's, let's try again because we're not getting, uh, this is live demos. This is what happens. But you see, we were able to get all the skeletons. We're just not gluing the skeletons together very well. Let's try that. I might ask someone to stand up because it's just, it's just, oh, look, we literally, could somebody in the front just stand up so we can get a good bead? Who wants to stand up? Come on, come on, let's have fun. Yay, all right, everybody, give him a clap. He's brave. He's brave, all right, there we go. There, this should work better now. There we go, so now we got him. Oh, and look, now we got the 3D guy. So thank you for being the center of this. So we've generated a full 3D skeleton of, of, of our victim, and we put him in a robot suit, and we can light his hands on fire, burn him. Fairy wings, that's a big thing. Um, you can control me. Here I am waving just like him. Background, all kinds of fun things. Anyways, so that sort of gives you a sense of what you can do with this. It's a core technology, but you could use it for augmented reality. 
so on and so forth. If I could s switch back to the PowerPoint now, please. All right. So we'll turn this off. And we will try to turn the... Oh, there we go. Boop, 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 boom. All right, from current slide. Right, so just to talk about the unique features. So we have super fast, interactive. You saw it, right? There it is. I proof. So we're tracking 23 body parts. You can see here the different body parts. We don't show the toes in this cut. We didn't get it ready for SIGGRAPH, but we are tracking the toes. So this system really knows, like, you know, for on a per-person basis, you know, your left eye, your right eye, your right ear. So there's a lot of data. We're not visualizing it at all. There you go. It works on babies. That, that's an interesting fact. So we, uh, and I think that's sort of building on what the um, other speaker said, where they were only training on uh, male voices, but it worked on females. We only trained on adults. And this is from Augmented World Expo. And this woman uh, showed up with her kid in a Jolly Jumper or, or Baby Bjorn or whatever it's called. And again, we never tested it. And uh, you know, we're tracking the little kid. That's cool. Um, just some more things. And I think what we're really going for is robustness, right? Because we're a company, and this is a commercial software that we want to license uh, to the world. It has to be robust. If, if it only works on, on a certain couple of use cases, that's not going to be practical if you're deploying it, let's say, in a vehicle or something. So I, I just want to give you a sense of sort of whet your appetite on the different kind of applications that this tech can be used for. Showed you the, uh, the obvious of the, v, uh, the, you know, the augmented reality. Dallas Mavericks used it for some social video. Uh, AR, uh, VR gaming. This is one that I think is really applicable here is, right, you see a lot of great VR and standard out-of-the-box VR, right, is you just have a head and you look down and you're like, oh my god, I don't have feet, you know, and maybe you have hands because of the hand tracking, that's it. With this technology, basically you can just plug a webcam in and have it running on your, you know, on your box and, and all of a sudden you can get your full scan. And I think that that's going to be a, you know, VR is all about immersion and, and be able to see your body, just see your body is going to help immersion, but then it's going to be able to drive, right? And, and you can do this, again, just with a simple camera. You don't have to uh, put on the suit. That's a lot of friction, expense, uh, so on and so forth. And also, I think for show floors, it's also interesting of being able to see, you know, you're watching someone play VR. You sort of want to see what they would look like in VR because you can see through their eyes, but that's disorienting because you're looking at, the screen and you're looking, wouldn't it be nice to have like a virtual green screen where if I'm walking around with my gun, you see me in that space. I think that, that's a lot of fun. Uh, human monitoring is another big use case of this and it really goes across everything from in vehicles, people want, uh, now as we're moving more and more towards autonomous vehicles, um, they want to know what's going on in the car, right? Uh, you know, there's some systems that are showing the face and is it distracted drivers, but there's literally, they want to know, uh, car manufacturers want to have a lot of information of like, is the person climbing in the back of the car? Or, you know, what's going on in the car? And really from a safety perspective, in the sense of not just the person trying to watch a movie in the back as the car drives, but, you know, if there's a small accident, are the people okay? Are they hunched over? Again, it's a sensor system. It's giving more. And building on that, you know, um, for, I, I was particularly elder care in the sense of if, um, you know, my grandmother, she, she had a stroke and it just so happened for those three days, my mother didn't come in and, 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 and check on her and she had a stroke and she laid there three days and, and that's, you know, it's a curve, right? The longer you can't help somebody, the worse it's going to get. And I think these, uh, you know, s systems like Alexa and Siri are going to... Now, right now they have ears. You're going to see these things evolve with e eyes. And I think the obvious, one of the first use cases of this is really understanding, you know, you know is the person okay? Especially for older people who are living alone, uh, that's, that's a really important thing. Uh, health and wellness is another one. Again, a lot of places where motion capture is used today it's sort of like we can, we can help a tenth fold. We can expand who can use this, right? This is just shot in our gym. Uh, if you want to do metrics on how fast is she punching, things like that, you don't have to put her in a suit. You just film her on your, you know, on your phone, shoot it up into the cloud, and you can get the data, things like that. 
sports analytics. Again, professional sports analytics, but also a natural uh, evolution as, as things always start in the pro market and then goes down to consumer. Uh, then here, robot interaction. Uh, another thing, I think I, I, I watched a really great talk by a, a researcher who worked with Autodesk in this notion of robots co-evolving, right? And I think a lot of people are like worried about robots are going to take our jobs and things like this where I come from a farm. Uh, farms have been auto, you know, mechanized for 100 years and I'm glad they're mechanized. They, they really do take out the dirty things, but we work with these things. So I think we're going to have a lot of interesting interactions with robots. But robots, what I think is exciting about the kind of technology we're building is we're teaching machines to read our body language fundamentally. And that is, that's why we're all here, right? Like we could watch this on the web and stuff, but to see each other, to get our sense of body language and so on and so forth is so important. So. I think this is real. This is one of my most favorite use cases of like how can machines understand us? How can they adapt to us? Right? Uh, that's a, that's really really exciting. Uh, building on the eyes of virtual assistants. So the tech, I'll, I'll just give a high level because this, but it's so um, training. We use the Coco database, so that's a pretty standard computer vision two D database. Uh, we've augmented it. Then we've built our own synthetic data, and I'll talk a little bit about that because for those of you who are not familiar with deep learning, it, at, the, at the end of the day, it boils down to having a lot of annotated data. So data sets where the metadata of what you're looking for is there. So in our particular case, you know, we want to know where all the joints are, and they're all labeled. So there are literally thousands and thousands of images I may have one in the next slide where you know it says you know left wrist, right wrist, and you it's just like training a training a kid. Uh, you know you just expose the machine to thousands and thousands of images, and at a certain point it it learns, ah that's a wrist, that's a wrist, that's an eye, so on and so forth. Uh, the engine, this is our backbone. So the two we have we have a two D system that extracts everyone in this space, and then from that. Like as we focused on our, on our subject here, we feed that, we segment that person out, and then we feed that person into a 3D, um, another 3D CNN, and that's where we generate the full skeleton out. And uh, inferencing. So on this, the, one of the reasons we were able to get some phenomenal speed is uh, we ported everything to TensorRT. So we have it running on TensorRT Linux. We have it running on TensorRT uh, Windows. And I would really recommend if, uh, if performance is, is, is what you need, we were really delighted. Like it was not, it was a straightforward process to get it running on TensorRT, taking it from cafe to TensorRT. The, the gotchas are always in the, uh, in, in the special layers we wrote, but it was, it was really great. And basically we just doubled our performance for free. It just bang. And I like free and I like fast. Uh, bum, bum, bum. So the synthetic data, this is, I think this is sort of this a big trend like Isaac and how they're, do, how they're doing robot training in Unreal is we're doing a sort of a similar thing. So we're using, in this case, we're using the Unity game engine where we jet, we've, we got six human models, so three, three male, three female, and then we randomize them. It was random skin, color, so on and so forth. And what's different backgrounds, different animations, but what's beautiful about this technique, right, is perfect annotation. Like with the Coco database, we literally paid people to sit in our, in our office and mark up toe, toe, toe every day. Where this is, you know, you just let the machine and you're going to get a perfect number. There's no QA issues and we get great variation. Um, this is totally the future. I think you're going to see more and more of not just us, but everybody in computer vision using game engines to build synthetic data. Um, and that's it. That's all. That's uh, part of my team. Uh, we're a tiny team in Montreal, 12 people, but uh, fantastic, fantastic group. And that's Molly, the test dog. And we don't track dogs because she goes away. Thank you very much.